Hi drummers, hope you're well. Right, the cinema show by Genesis. Shout out to channel member Tim who asked about this one and was working on this, in fact, in his face-to-face -face session today. This was played by Phil Collins. Of course, uh, it's in 7-8. We're talking here about the second half of the tune that begins at 5 minutes 54 and carries on from there. Uh, let's deal with that first. 7-8, the, the top number of a time signature tells you the number of beats in each bar. There are seven beats in each bar. The bottom number of the time signature tells you the note value of each beat, or seven of what? Uh, they're eighth notes or quavers. So that's the basic pulse, seven eighth notes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. When we count up to seven here, we're counting the quavers. That isn't always the case, is it? In the early sort of grades or when we first start playing the drums, usually when we count the numbers, they're the quarter notes or the crotchets. But here, I, and people always ask me what grade level are these grooves at? This one probably grade seven or eight, pretty high to be honest. So you've got the eighth notes as the basic pulse. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, it go, the groove that I'm gonna present here goes like this. And the thing to say about this is it's not a drum beat. It's in classic prog rock style, a time feel. So what I'm presenting here is just a typical bar of like once the groove sort of settles and gets going, just this typical sort of thing that Phil Collins plays. Obviously it changes, it varies, and you can and we can do that when we get our head around it. Uh, I should say here in this video, I'm presenting this one bar just as a, as a place to start with this and to get our head around it. Over on the channel members page, I'll present two other variations, uh, one where he goes to the ride and one where he plays more open hi-hats uh, if you want to get more deeply in, into some different variations here. But that's the basic idea. Now, th this is a, <laughs> the thing about counting is people sometimes like counting. Sometimes people say, oh, I don't want to count. I just want to feel it. Here's my position on it. Uh, I like counting. I like a bit of head and a bit of heart. I like both of those things. When I'm on stage playing music under the lights or I'm in a recording studio and the red lights on, I definitely do not want to be counting at that point. I just want to be thinking about the big ideas in music. Does it flow? Does it feel good? I just want to be in the moment. I definitely don't want to be counting at that point. Uh, just it's all heart at that point but for me when we're working stuff out when it's complicated i really like counting at that point uh because sometimes you have to right things are complicated people always ask me yeah what grade level these things are at and i'd say this is yeah grade seven or a grade eight this is this is pretty tricky stuff so i really like to count at first because then well it's like your candle in the dark isn't it you've at least you've got a reference you've got a a chance of you know working out and placing each beat in the right place so I'm going to count, and with a groove like this, I would count until I got the feel for it. And actually, as we were discussing with Tim today, he made a very good point. Sometimes the counting, there's a sort of tipping point, and this is actually true of reading music, I think, as well. There's a tipping point where it stops being useful and actually could become a bit of a crutch at that point. Sooner or later, you've got to trust yourself and say, right, I'm going to go and be a musician. I'm going to perform this. Great for getting things off the ground. Great for being logical when you're in that working out mode. But then when we start to move towards performance mode, no, we need to lose the counting at that point. That's that's or that's how I uh, that's how I go about it anyway. Counting when we're working out, but not when we're performing. And if you can't perform it yet, that's cool. Just go back to the counting. That's how I how I do it. Here we're going to count one, two, and three, four, and five, and six, and seven, and one, two, and three, four, and five, and six, and seven, and so the eighth notes here are the numbers, and the sixteenth notes are the ands. Uh, so one, two, and three, four, and five, and six, and seven, and is the basic count of this one bar that I'm presenting here. I'm going to play it for you, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to play it with without the open and close hi hat. So I'm just going to little, get a little feel for it. I'm also going to go like way slower than it actually goes at first. One, two, and three, four, and five, and six, and seven. And five and six and seven. One, two, and three, four, and five and six and seven. One, two, and three, four, and five and six and seven. 
So what I'm doing here, like I'm like I said, is I'm not playing the open close hi hat. I'm also not playing the little double or buzz stroke, which is notated there as well. And we'll come back to that. Just getting the basic hand pattern working. Now the first bit, one, two, and three, four, and I think is a, is the simplest bit. It's, it's a little bit like you were going to play like a sort of hip hop type of groove. You know when you play. It's got that kind of feel, hasn't it? Like in that case, it would be one and two, uh, but it's uh, one, two, and three, four, and. So on one, two, and three, four, and it's really like the first half of a bar of four, four, isn't it? One, two, and three, four, and. One, two, and three, four, and. One, two, and so that's the first bit. On five and six and, it's like a paradiddle. So right, left, right, right. Not the complete loop where you go left, right, left, left as well. But right, left, right, right. This is assuming you're right-handed uh, and playing a right-handed kit. Obviously, uh, good old Phil Collins was is left-handed and was playing the kit the other way around. So if you're doing a Phil Collins and you're left-handed, this will be left, right, left, left. But right, left, right, right on five and six and. Five and six and. So hi-hat and the kick locked together here. Five and six and. And then seven and. Two little snares. Now all the snares here are played softly. I'm almost going to say ghost notes, but I'm going to hesitate slightly to call them ghost notes because I think if you listen to the recording, I'd say they're soft snare drum hits generally rather than necessarily ghost notes. They're not quite to my ears, like Purdy-esque or Jeff Beccaro ghost notes where they're like super soft, like is he playing it, is he not, is it like sort of felt rather than heard. I'd say they are, they're distinct and especially the sort of buzzy bit, which we'll get to in a bit, is a little stronger than what I would see as a classic ghost note. But the, the point is, they're all soft, like quite low to the drum head, except for the big hit on beat three, which is a loud backbeat style hit. So let's recap. One, two and three, four and... Five and six and seven and. Here we go. One, two, and three, four, and five, and six, and seven and. One, two, and three, four, and five, and six, and seven and. One, two, and three, four, and five, and six, and seven and. One, two, and three, four, and five, and six, and seven and. Let's work it up a bit. Two and three, four and five and six and seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that'll get you quite a lot of the way, right? That'll, if you play that with the music, it'll fit, it'll groove, and like the rest of the band, if you're playing it in a band, could, could fit with that, right? So the two other elements, I would say, are that buzzed, or to my ears, it's more like a sort of bounce double stroke on the and of beat four, and then the open and close high here. Let's, let's add in that double or buzz stroke now on the and of beat four. So everything else the same as before. One, two, and three, four, and five, and six, and seven, and one, you're getting that so on the and of beat four i'm actually playing it as a, a double like i said you could buzz it as well it's a little hard to hear exactly either would work great i think uh that actually makes it into a 30 second note if you double it doesn't it One, two, and three, four, and five, and six, and seven, and one, two, and three, four, and five, and six, and seven, and one, two, and three, four, and five, and six, and seven. And
Okay, and finally, but also kind of crucially, honestly, for the for the feel of the groove and how it sits with the songs, we're going to open the hi-hat on the one and the three, and we close the hi-hat to my ears on the two and the four. In other words, pea soup, pea soup at the start. One, two, three, four. I would personally play this with a heel down. Uh, did a channel members video a while back. If you channel members just search for uh, hi-hat, technique uh, i did a video all about how i would personally play the hi-hat in like a wide variety of playing situations in this one i would personally play it with the heel down and the reason for that is i feel like especially on acoustic hi-hat but this is a pretty good electronic hi-hat as well when you play heel down i feel like you get really good control over the sound when you play it with heel up the hi-hat like bouncing on the ball of your foot that's great in some circumstances like i like to do that when i'm playing eighth notes on the hi-hat I feel like it gives you that sort of speed and that looseness but the problem with doing it with heel up on the hi-hat when you're playing this sort of groove as far as I'm concerned is your hi-hat basically becomes a switch it's either wide open or tight shut isn't it there's no middle ground what I like about heel down personally when you're playing the hi-hat with the stick is and it yeah to some extent does it on this but especially on the acoustic hi-hat like I was playing at the start of this video you can get more of a control over the sound. In other words, you can open it just a little bit and get that lovely sort of sizzle sound as it just opens. And I think that suits this song really well. So I would play heel down on the hi-hat. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four. So one, two, and three, four, and five, and six, and seven, and one, two, and three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four. So I'm going to go really slow. I'm going to play the whole thing. And remember, this really is just an example bar, man. That's all it is. Uh, it's, I can't stress enough. It's that lovely flowing time feel. It's just an example bar. I'm going to go really slow and I'll just roll it around a bit. So one, two, and three, four, and five, and six, and seven, and one, two, and three, four, and five, and six, and seven, and and six and Now, the full speed that we're looking to get to is somewhere in the region of uh, eighth note equals 270, 280, something like that. So uh, these are your, those are your eighth notes. So if you met, what I would do is set your metronome to that speed. Well, obviously go way slower at first and work it up. But uh, I would set my metronome to seven beats in the bar, if you can do that. And you need something that identifies beat one, right? So I've got this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So here it is at 270, so pretty much full speed. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And so the truth of it is, honestly, start wherever you can or wherever you like. It might well be that at first, depending on, like I always say, depends where you're at with your drumming, but it might well be at first you don't even have the click at all and you're not even really at tempo, you're just working it out. 
massive thing. I just say this all the time, but I'm aware and from my experience, I can see that very few drummers actually do do this, which is at first really do just go slow, show your hands and your feet and your brain one moment at a time. Almost everybody tries to miss that bit out. The handful of people who do that they're the people who get good at playing the drums man i'm telling you that's how it works they just bother like people people have this people are so wildly confused in my opinion about talent it's you have to bother you have to actually bother to do it that's what it is that's the the you know the variable of success is whether people bother to sort of you know follow it break it down count it out present your brain with the information at first don't be seduced into just playing fast and hoping for the best. Like feed the information in, truly learn it, engage with it. You know, like you've got a problem to solve here. This is difficult. There's no expectation you'd play this straight away. You spit on your hands, you roll up your sleeves and you start at the beginning and you build this thing. You know, so, so in my experience, so few people actually get that. It's really fascinating to see at, at scale actually. So, right, I'm going to go real slow here. Uh, let's take it right down. So that was 270. Let's go uh, 120. Let's go crazy slow. Three, four, five, six, seven. Now remember, these are the eighth notes. Three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, and three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, 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 three, four, five, six, seven. The thing is, still quite fast, isn't it? For a lot of people working this up. Let's go slower. Let's take it down to 70 beats per minute. Three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, and three, four, and five, and six, and seven, and one, two, and three, four, and five, and six, and seven, and one, two, and Two and three, four and five and six and seven and So maybe that kind of tempo is like the lower end of where you would use the metronome, maybe 60, 70 beats per minute. When you get crazy, crazy, crazy slow, it's actually quite hard in its own right, isn't it? Because you sort of lose the musical context, the musical flow a little bit. Maybe before that kind of speed, you would literally just be going, and just to repeat, I do this all the time with loads of things. You would just be going, okay, open hi-hat and kick, closed hi-hat, kick, open hi-hat and snare, Closed hi hat, double stroke or soft snare, hi hat with kick, and so on. Just f like feed the information in bit by bit. Let your brain actually see it. Like give your brain a chance to learn it. Give it a, a plausible way that it's actually going to like consolidate this information and then build it up from there. So that's a, a huge thing in in my opinion. And again, really interesting to see uh, for me. Like so few people do it, and of course I'm saying this like. You know, I'm. Like, of course, I do this as well. Of course, with everything else in life, I, I catch myself doing this exact thing. And I'm, of course, I'm sorely tempted to do this every time I practice drums as well. So that's uh, that's a great way to think of it. I think that's the groove. It's an amazing thing. I can't repeat enough times. It's just that's just one typical example of the sort of groove that he plays. Like I say, check out the channel members page if you're a channel member for two other uh, practice along uh, grooves as well that have. Uh, so other variations one where he goes to the ride one with more open uh, hi-hats in there which happens earlier on uh, it moves to the ride later but right at the beginning there's actually more open hi-hats than that example I've given there so shout out to Tim amazing tune uh, amazing record that was 1974 from Selling England by the Pound just an amazing uh, bit of drumming and Tim made the good point that actually Phil Collins is you know people think of Phil Collins and they think of da da ba 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 and that's great people think of him being a pop star in the 80s and 90s I think the the problem is for him, he was just he was too good at being a pop star. People forget how good he was at being this, this sort of prog rock uh, drummer. It's an amazing performance. It's an amazing sort of sound. I think I love the tom tom sound. He's got like a kind of big open, like jazzy type of tom tom sound going on, which we don't associate really with Phil Collins at all these days. Um, 
it's an amazing bit of playing. I love it. Thanks for watching as always. I hope that sheds a bit of light on it. Shout out to Tim. Uh, please like, share and subscribe. If you found these videos useful, please consider supporting this channel. Uh, you can do that by buying me a coffee. Thanks to mil a million to all the amazing people who've bought me a coffee and you're really helping uh, sustain this channel. Um, or you can become a channel member like Tim uh, as a channel member for £10 a month. You're supporting this channel like crazy uh, and helping it along and helping it becoming an integral part of it. You also get a load of stuff in return, including a complimentary face-to-face uh, -face or Zoom session, access to future Zoom or face-to-face -face sessions after that, uh, a personalized, customized practice plan for you that will update as often as you like as you progress, uh, your questions answered, ongoing drum support, uh, and like... Pra uh, practice alongs and notation for the videos that I put up, members videos and tons of other stuff uh, like that. If that sounds like a bit of interest, details above or below where it says buy me a coffee, become a channel member here, please click on that for more information and sign up and uh, thanks for watching as always, really appreciate it. One, two, three.